It was a Saturday, the 4th of May, in 1844, that a young bishop came from Cincinnati, of all places, to Milwaukee to claim some modest little church downtown, the site is downtown, the church is gone, which had been dedicated to St. Peter as his cathedral church. The bishop's name was John Henney. He was from Switzerland. And when it dawned on him, the daunting task that lay before him, they say he would walk up and down the shore of Lake Michigan and he would weep for what he had to accomplish and the very little means he had at his disposition. But almost right away, he started a building fund for a cathedral, and in 1853, a very fine one was consecrated on this day, the 31st of July, dedicated to St. John. It burnt down in the 1930s. They say it was arson, although it was never pursued. The cathedral was rededicated during World War II and, of course, changed under cousins with the council and completely destroyed by Weakland just before he happily left office here in Milwaukee. And yet the feast day, as I say, remains on our calendar. So important is the hierarchy and the structure of the church, even though it be in abeyance today. So it gives us an occasion to contemplate the beauty of the Lord's house and God's plan that we should have churches. Uh, In July, we observe each year the dedication anniversary of this chapel. It's a modest affair. You might say, well, it's no cathedral. But yet, on the other hand, was ever there a cathedral that was more loved and more fussed over, as it were, made as beautiful as possible for every holy mass in such a warm and an inviting house of prayer for the glory of Almighty God. But the essential is that its work has continued here these 27 years, the true Mass in the true Church, capital C, the Catholic Church, not the modernist, and then lowercase c, this particular church building, with its uncompromising doctrine. These are the days of darkness, as Our Lady predicted at La Salette, the church is eclipsed. And if you're wondering why sometimes things seem to be so bad, and how could it be, if there's an eclipse, my goodness, you can't see anything at all. There's, everything is dark. It's all dark. But we have a church such as this still today, and so much more, thanks be to God. However, what would you think if the next time you came to this church, you found the crucifix, the altars, the root screen, the communion rail, all gone, everything painted beige, and then there'd be wall-to-wall carpeting, there'd be a small table where the altar had been, and then there'd be a big chair for the president of the assembly. You would take one look, you might cry out, you might well weep, but you wouldn't stick around to see what was going to happen next. You would get out, and as you left, you would say, that's not the Catholic Church, that's a new religion, and that's the religion we left a long, long time ago. Now, They're not doing that to us, and they never will, but they're striving to do their very best to do that to our children. But that's the difficulty, isn't it? You want everything for your kids, and you sacrifice, and you work very hard for them. And the fact of the matter is that our children never lived through our laws never had to struggle to figure things out, and never had probably to start over again 
from scratch. Some, inevitably perhaps, because growing up is the process of growing away, do see things differently from their parents. Some fall away entirely in how we must work and how we must pray until they return. Others, Zacchaeus-like, are small of stature. There's somehow some kind of a limitation there in the mind, the will, or the heart, and have been brought into a more comfortable religion with more people. Not so small, you see. The faithful of the Old Testament at our Lord's time in the Holy Land were despised by the rest of the empire, the Roman Empire. They were despised as fanatics, I think. Everybody else worshipped the gods. They worshipped the gods of the empire. They worshipped the neighboring gods. Everybody else, more or less, got along in the system. They compromised. But the Jews, who were faithful to the temple at Jerusalem and to the law of Moses, they were horrified at the prospect. Zacchaeus was a publican. He was one of those who was sort of still keeping the Old Testament religion, but had compromised considerably because, well, that's just how it is anymore. But still there was something in Zacchaeus. Still there was something. And that day he went to Jericho and he climbed a tree to see the Savior. Now, I think, I've been thinking about this this summer, because it's everywhere today, but children grow up and grow away for all sorts of different reasons. And I think it's okay sometimes to talk about it charitably, quietly, moderately, rather than considering it to be some sort of a secret that must be held deep within above all. After all, there's comfort in that, as I say, within reason. And our religion, too, our religion, we believe, does have the answers. And that's a kind of comfort we can give each other with sympathy. But we traditional Catholics do not pretend to have all of the answers why they or anyone may go astray. And then we think to ourselves on an occasion like this, I know I do, wasn't it only yesterday that they stood there before us, their innocent faces gleaming with the cross of chrism for confirmation? Where are they today? Well, we don't pretend to know exactly why. And we still, of course, must love them, and we do. We love them all the more, as our Lord does, for the great distance they may have strayed. And there are many questions. Of course, there's a question of marriage and young romantic love that may lead a child grown up now away to join the modern church or no church or the pious attend society, something like that. There could be two, we're human after all, some resentment, some misunderstanding, some weakness or a scandal in the past. There could be some internal instability within. We could only guess at those things. And if we do, we must be very careful to be very prudent and restrained, and sometimes silence is the best. But we could never pretend to have a complete answer. Life is complicated. We handle it with prayer. 
But I'm thinking of this, though, today, as we observe to our church anniversary here, I'm thinking of church logic. If you can, in a pinch, go to Mass with them, that's the phrase that we use, the unicum, to be one with them, why, why not then, why couldn't you, for one reason or another, just join them? And if they can go to Mass with Bergoglio, with Pope Francis, why shouldn't they not join him in the modern church. And that's what, that's all really that the Pius X Society is preparing to do. And all the more so if they, the modern church authorities, this great empire throughout the world, if they offer you a magnificent church, say a St. Joseph at some place or a St. Stanislaus, and, and respectability, along with the music and the ceremonies, all this will I give thee, if falling down thou wilt worship me. They'll give you everything except the purity of Catholic doctrine handed down faithfully throughout the centuries. That, ah, alas, no, you may not have. Because it's not the Catholic Church. St. Augustine said that a long time ago. He said, outside of the church, you can do pretty near everything. You can sing Alleluia, and you can read the scriptures, and you can have your services, and so forth. You have everything except for Christ. We must be in him and in his mystical body. And it is a body which does not and could not teach error. Jesus Christ, this is his home. We are here to see him. We are on this earth to serve him, to have him dwell not only on our altar, in our hearts at Holy Communion, but in our house, under our roof. That is why we are here. And that is why we you have labored mightily at St. Hugh unless we have labored in vain. And so we have if we quietly accept that our children should end up in the very religion their parents or their grandparents left with anguish perhaps and great sacrifice, and tears. And for what? For the new one world religion. Well, they've gussied it up for the trads. It's the traditional lipstick on a pig, but you can't change the nature of the beast. The Vatican said a few days ago that the Pius X Society has only to accept the primacy of the Pope they don't right now, formally speaking, they, they are schismatic. But all they have to do is accept the primacy of the Pope, and the deal is done, and they will be part of that empire throughout the world. They don't have to sign off on Vatican II anymore, and the reason for that is that this man, Bergoglio, presents a dogma-free religion. Believe what you want. It makes no difference. Just come along. Just get along with the majority. Oh, there are a few other non-negotiables, of course, but you wouldn't even mention them today. The Jewish question would be one. But when it comes to the Pope, though, he wants you to criticize the Pope because that's part of the planned destruction and the confusion that is to lead to this revolutionary new religion. Like Zacchaeus and the publicans of old, they have wed God's revealed religion with the world's paganism. 
part I can't see going to the wedding because what's to celebrate? But Jesus, our Lord, through his church, his faithful clergy, through his members, through the mystical body, through you, his soldiers, his confirmed Catholics, Jesus still walks through you in our Jerichos. And sometimes he stops under a tree. And some he looks up and he spots some high and mighty kid who suddenly has all the answers to prove you, his parents, wrong. And he fixes that one with a look. And he says, make haste, come down. Get down off the perch of your pride, your newfound respectability. Because today I must dwell not only in my churches that are left, these lovely little homes they've given me, which really do very nicely all of these years of the eclipse, but says he, the Savior, to some fallen away who's still climbing trees, that's the point, to get a look at us today, come down. I must dwell in thy house today. Don't pass us by, Lord Jesus, not a one of our children or grandchildren. Stop under their tree and say, get down today. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.